As difficult as it is to imagine, the organ's neglect did hold hidden benefits. In other cases, well-intentioned updates have resulted in destructive and permanent alterations to an instrument's voicing. The convention hall organ has been neglected, but it is, as a result, absolutely original in every sense. This adds additional sensitivities to the restoration effort. Because this organ was neglected over the years and never had the proper maintenance it needed, it hasn't been screwed around with. It's still intact, dirty, filthy, needs a lot of help and loving care, but we have an unprecedented opportunity on this scale to hear an instrument as our forefathers heard it. It's a window into time. It's absolutely essential that the original sound of this instrument be maintained in every detail. The pipes, the wind system, the expression system, all of the other things that contribute to its musical integrity must be maintained exactly with no changes whatsoever. It is important to keep the historical integrity of the sound of the instrument. This is an area that is discussed continuously by people in our business. Uh, where do you draw the line? What is authenticity? How far can you go to improve mechanics, to make it more reliable because we might have a new technique for doing certain things? I have always felt that the history of the instrument is in how the air gets to the pipework and the pipework. That's where I draw the line. If I can take away the difficulties you have in this kind of saltwater environment and do something electronically as far as how the control system works, that's a plus because the hall needs a reliable instrument. The wonderful part about this, everything is still intact except for one relay for the swell. The other side of the stage from where we are sitting was removed, but it's intact and it can be replicated by a uh, current solid state relay. It is a wonderful experience to come back here and again sit at the console of this wonderful, wonderful instrument. And I'm so fortunate to have lived to see it getting started again. The New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority has given us $1.1 million to begin the restoration and we have to raise a lot more. We need corporate, we need government, we need uh, individuals. We need to get our story out there and then I think we're going to make it happen. Fully funded, the restoration of the convention hall organ is expected to take six years. The sheer scope of the project will necessitate the services of numerous organ building firms. The best thing anyone could do who's uh, listening and getting excited about what a wonderful thing is happening here, because it is a wonderful thing, they should join the Atlantic City Convention Hall Organ Society, which is our not-for-profit organization that supports us, because they will be one of our sources of funds for the restoration of the instrument. With 33,112 pipes, the Atlantic City Convention Hall organ is the largest organ in the world. There are no organs like it. Every pipe is a note on the organ. If we could put a name on each pipe and get 33,112 sponsors, it would be wonderful. Viewers can help in many ways. They can write letters to the, the government, the state, their senators. Um, they can uh, donate money, that's for sure. Um, they can buy the organ music that's been remastered. There's websites, uh, there's wonderful books about it, and they can just get curious. My hope someday for the Atlantic City Convention Hall Pipe Organ is it will be available on a daily basis. I would love to see noon concerts held every day. I would love to see the Miss America pageant use it. I would love to see people play hockey to it. I think really when the population of Atlantic City and all of our tourists understand what we have in this building, that people will come here from all over the world and it will help to enhance everyone's experience who comes to this magnificent building. An organ is a science lesson ready to be taught. This instrument could teach our children 
audio technology and production of sound. You can learn about how it's put together. You can talk about pressure and what happens with pipes. You can also teach them by playing all different types of music. It's something kids can walk into and really use today. They can see the pipes, they can hear the pipes, they can push buttons and see exactly how all this operates. Several concert halls around the world have installed new instruments. A handful of cities have restored historic municipal pipe organs. And a number of movie palaces now boast fully functioning instruments that date from their glory years. Though the organ count will never reach the numbers it once did, evidence abounds that the pendulum is swinging back. The time for Atlantic City's one-of-a-kind showpiece is here. The Atlantic City Convention Hall organ belongs not only to Atlantic City, but also to America and to the world as a whole, because it is the world's largest pipe organ. And as a single instrument, it has more interest in it around the world than any other single instrument. This organ is unique in the Convention Hall, and there are no other organs that are ever going to sound this way. We want to know that, that the time we had here, we left things better than where they were when we, when we arrived, and to me that's what it's all about. It is a genuine work of art, and to throw a work of art away is to discard a valuable piece of art history, and once you've lost it, you can't ever get it back. I would call this a treasure of the whole musical world. It's known everywhere. In fact, I must say, it's probably appreciated in some cases more in Europe and in England than it is here. There's nothing like it. Nothing's ever been built like this. And we have a sacred duty to restore it. We are the stewards of a national treasure. It's the crowning example of a municipal organ. It's the granddaddy of the amazing instrument of the pipe organ.